Hey y'all, welcome back to another video with laughs, gags, and gossip. Now let's get into the mess. Hey family, welcome back to the channel, Celebrity Scandalous. Now you guys can tell I'm struggle streaming because I still I still have my old intro on lab gags and gossip. But thank you for joining me today. Happy Easter to all of you who celebrated. I hope you had a great time because you know what? Tomorrow is back to the grind for most of us. But anyway, let's get into this tea. Now, to be honest, there's not a lot happening with Diddy right now. I mean, it's it's a it's gonna be a slow process, you know. Um, over the weekend, he's been spotted. And can you guys just jump, somebody jump in the comments and let me know if you can hear me. You know, I'm still, like I said, struggle streaming. Um, he has been spotted out in Miami with his girls. He's been bicycle riding. He's been at Top Golf. That man is having more fun than me. And I ain't got no allegations hanging over my head. So Diddy is out doing his thing. But, you know, truth be told, there was an exclusive um, on, I believe it was Fox new york uh and i did a video about this on friday um somebody gave information that they did find videotapes they found evidence however there is not um an arrest that's going to be made soon so i mean you know there there are people going back and for back and forth talking about whether or not he's going to be arrested if he was raided why isn't there an arrest well we know that the feds they do their thing the way that they do it it can take years um, I know with the recent race, people are just like, well, if they had something, they would, you know, they would bring him in, they would arrest him. But, you know, I guess they want an airtight case. So from what I'm hearing and from, you know, those, it, because this investigation was um, initiated by Homeland Security out of New York, and that's where this information is coming from, there's no arrest that's going to be made soon. So we're just going to keep hearing reports about witnesses um you know j-lo now they're saying that she they're the issue that happened the incident that happened back in 1999 where she um had the pow pow in her purse that's being brought up again so all of his old dirt in all of the old cases they're starting to reopen look at them again and starting to um you know uh uh talk to the witnesses so that's what we're hearing so i think it's just gonna be a long process uh, so there's nothing, nothing really shocking there. Um, so with all those moving pieces about Diddy, let's get into some old stuff about Diddy. Now, I, I mean, I'm, you know, when I hear a story or when I, you know, get into something, I do become pretty upset. So I just be looking in all the nooks and crannies. And when I'm hearing all these stories, and for those of you who are new to my channel, Celebrity Scandalous, uh, my old channel, uh, Laugh, Gags, and Gossip, was demonetized. So it said that I had some reused content. So I had to delete over like five or 600, maybe 800 videos. I had over 1,000 videos. So I had to delete a lot of them. And I had old videos about Kim Porter when she first, you know, was, un well, when she passed. Because we don't know exactly what happened. It's allegations that he, did he may have had a hand in it. But we still don't really know. So I had videos about that. And I have videos about Diddy and Justin both dating uh, Lori Harvey. So I want to go back and visit now that all of these allegations from Cassie have come forward and this new complaint with Little Rod and just all the stuff that we're hearing about Diddy. It would surprise me if Diddy was, you know, doing a little bit more <laughs> than he should have been with his kids. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but we see that Diddy has had inappropriate and inappropriate history with his sons so let's start the first one with Lori Harvey you know remember back in the day there were allegations that Diddy was uh dating Lori and that she had previously dated Justin you you guys remember that so Lori denied it but so many people behind the scenes if you go on to these you know different sites people were posting they spotted they used to see her with Justin, and then they started seeing her with Diddy. And we see we saw pictures of uh, Diddy and Lori wearing matching outfits. We know that they were dating because Lori, uh, they w they went on some kind of a, a vacation with Steve Harvey and Marjorie, so they were dating. But she denies it. But anyway, let's go listen to her talk about it. Okay. I think like a man. Like I, I feel 
like everybody wants to know what is the one piece of advice he's given you that really has stuck? Just remember that you're the prize always. Say that one more time. Just remember (laughs) that you are the prize. Yes. That's like his golden slogan for me. Yeah. And what does that mean for you in relationships when you're like, I'm the prize? What does that mean? It just means not compromising like my values, my happiness, my peace, not settling for less than what I know I deserve and not being afraid to walk away from a situation if it's like no longer serving me. I even feel like a lot of people could have speculation if it's like no longer serving me. Now I'm going to pause it right there because she's talking about Steve Harvey and the dating advice that he gave her. You know, of course, we know Steve Harvey wrote the book date like a uh, act like a woman and date like a man whatever that book is he wrote you guys know it and if he, steve gave her so much information about how to be a lady and how to carry herself harvey is known to be getting around in them streets now it's okay to date you know and i don't care what people say there is a double standard when it comes to dating when it comes to men and women dating i'm sorry I, maybe i'm old school but Unfortunately, as a lady, <laughs> you just do not get the same passes that men get when you spread yourself thin. And there were allegations that Lori just be bopping the man, the man, the man. Now, I'm with the woman dating. I mean, well, hell, people do what they want to do. But this is just my opinion. It's one thing to date, but you have to use some discretion. And when we start seeing you out with everybody um, it's it's starting to look like you might be a little bit, you know, a little bit loose, like them undies is like just being stretched too many places. You know, that's that's just what I see. But I don't know. But anyway, let's let's get back into what she's saying. I even feel like a lot of people could have speculated so many things in your past relationships. And you've always been so classy and very mums the word. You're like, I'm not going to be out here saying a whole lot, but if it does not serve me, I'm moving on. Mm hmm. I got that. Now, so many things get written Come about on, you in the about press, it. but I've always wanted to know what is like the biggest misconception about who Lori Harvey is? It's so funny because there's because I'm so quiet. Yeah. There's been so many stories that have yeah. been made up about me. Like yeah. I've seen stories about me being like fully in love with somebody mm-hmm. and we have like this whole relationship and I'll see the guy and I'm like, I've actually never even met him before. No. Like full blown stories. I've heard I've dated a father and son before. Not true? I, absolutely not true. And I've even heard that I'm a lesbian at one point. So you know there's been a lot of different things. You know, a lot, I, of, a lot of, of stories, a lot of misconceptions. Does so. it entertain you? Oh, I think they're hilarious. I love the stories. They're they're very entertaining. I will give them that. Yeah. Very entertaining. But I just let it roll off my shoulder. I love. Okay. So now I never heard the story about uh, anybody saying that she was, you know. But yeah, I've heard the stories about her and Justin and Diddy. And I mean, I could imagine that she would want to deny it because who does that? I mean, maybe that's the thing to do for these young girls. I don't know. But kind of dating a father and a son. And believe me, this was about two, two to three years ago. There were stories after stories. People would jump into like um, uh, the neighborhood talk and they would be posting about, yeah, you know, her uh, Lori was spotted out with Justin, da, 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 da. And it wasn't even like there was a big break. There are pictures, there are photos. I don't have them on here, but there are photos of her and Justin, um, and Diddy, all of them at parties together. I mean, you know, if you look at, uh, actually, I didn't put it on, on the on the um, thumbnail. But yeah, I mean, come on, Lori. <laughs> People know what time it is, allegedly. So I thought that was interesting. Now, so before we get into even how weird all of this is, let's talk about um, some other things where Diddy is inappropriate. There are stories of Diddy like going to the strip club with his sons. Now, I mean, I I don't know if that's something that men do. I have a daughter, so I don't know how fathers, uh, you know, how they interact with their sons. But there are stories that Diddy, you know, was seen in the strip clubs. Now we hear that Diddy has dated his exes. But there's also stories that they, now Justin is now named Justin Combs his son, is named in the lawsuit of participating in X acts with underage girls or like, who does that? 
what parent is in the same vicinity of your child engaging in that kind of behavior? You know, kids going to do what they're going to do. I mean, you know, Justin is an adult, but what are you doing being in the same location with your son? You know what I mean? Like that, that's just weird. You know, and there are stories that he's out with the young guys, with these women, they're doing stuff. And I would, I mean, honestly, the stuff that I'm hearing about Diddy, I wouldn't be surprised if he wasn't literally in the same room with him. I'm just saying, I know it sounds gross, but this is, this is what I'm getting from Diddy. But now let's go to this story. Um, I found this story about, um, it, it was a article about Quincy. And then I'll tell you how I got to this story because I was just like, has there ever been any inappropriate allegations about Diddy with his sons, like specifically Quincy? So we'll get to that. But as I was coming across it, I ran, I you know, ran into some articles, and this was something that I found. And it's so, so as you can see, I mean, of course, it's a it's an article. It wasn't a YouTube video, but it's they're saying Quincy is saying I was too young, and they talk about. Quincy describing his life with Diddy. And it says, this is my question that many fans and critics have been asking after a recent interview with Quincy Brown, the 30 year old son of the rap mogul, Sean Diddy Combs. Quincy, who is also an actor and singer, opened up about his childhood and how he witnessed some of the most extravagant and notorious parties that his father threw at their homes. Okay. Quincy revealed that he was exposed to a lot of adult situations. Pause. Remember, Usher has been saying the same thing. Well, back in the article interview that he did with, um, you know, that I forget the guy's name. But y'all, everybody has played that interview where he says, I saw some curious things. And he was a teenager. So if Diddy was allowing young Justin Bieber, Usher to see young, you know, curious things. I'm pretty sure his own children have seen some things too. So remember, this is Quincy. Quincy revealed that he was exposed to a lot of adult situations and behaviors at a very young age, such as drinking. Okay, well, you know, I'm not going to say a lot of families, they, you know, they have wine. You go to other countries, the kids have wine at 10 and 11. Drugs, now that, that's a problem. That, now that to me is definitely a problem because, um, you know, there, there's just no reason that young children, as the parent, you're supposed to prevent them being exposed to stuff like that. We know it is going to happen. Of course, you're supposed to talk to them, but you kind of want to keep your kids from, you know, being exposed to drugs around you. You know what I mean? Um, nudity. Now, that's another weird one. I, I can't like, what do you mean? Uh, has my child seen me around the house, maybe in a flash, but even in your household, you teach your children to, uh, you know, wear robes, appropriate garments. So the way I'm reading this is that he's seen this with other people. I'm feeling like it's not just his family, like people in the family, but he's been exposed to all of these different elements in the vein of, you know, salacious, like, not in the right manner. And then he also talks about violence. He said that he often felt scared and confused by what he saw and that he had to grow up fast and learn how to cope with chaos. Can you imagine that? I mean, this man, you know, this mogul with all this money and you got a kid saying that they felt scared and confused. And here are these people in the hood, you know, we be struggling, working, taking our kids to daycare, trying to make ends meet, living from paycheck to paycheck. You know, you know, we have a little chaos and stuff, but you're he has to learn how to cope with chaos. I mean, doesn't hey, listen, most of us think that money prevents some of this stuff. Money is a safeguard to having to live in chaos, but I guess not. Cause he says he had to learn how to cope with chaos. That's really sad. That's crazy to me. He also admitted that he sometimes felt neglected and abandoned by his father, who was always busy with his career and his multiple relationships. And so Quincy is Diddy's. Now, I've been hearing that he adopted Quincy, but I haven't seen any, you know, uh, documents saying that he legally adopted him or changed his name or anything like that. 
but we do know that he has raised him since he was very little uh from the history that i've seen he kind of pretty much pushed albie sure out the picture i don't know why albie sure you know didn't fight to stand his son's life and I, I mean that's a whole nother story you know um and like i said given the fact that diddy was so dangerous and people around him were unalived i could kind of understand it i can kind of see it but you know from a male perspective, I don't know. My kid is involved. I might have to lose my life to defend, you know, my visitation or my desire to be in my kid's life. You know, that's just how I see it. But um, so then Quincy goes on to say, however, Quincy also acknowledged that his childhood experiences have left some scars on him, that he has struggled with some issues such as anxiety trust and intimacy y'all that's deep that's deep for this young man who we all look at like oh wow money party and lavish lifestyle cars and clothes and trips and this and that this man has the same problems that we have anxiety trust intimacy mental he's struggling mentally he said that he has been working on himself and his mental health and that he has found some outlets for his emotions such as music, art, and therapy. He said that he hopes to use his platform to inspire others who have gone through similar situations. And I hope he does, because I think it would be good for young people to see that just because, you know, all the stuff you see on Instagram is just a facade. Half these people are crazy, <laughs> crazier than you, okay? And to raise awareness about the importance of mental health. That would be, that would really be great if he did. Quincy's interview has sparked a lot of reactions from the public, some of whom praised him for his honesty and courage, and others who criticized him for airing his family's dirty laundry. Hmm, I don't know about that. I mean, uh, I guess he's telling his truth. And in this particular article, I don't see that he has necessarily said anything damaging at the time against Diddy. But, you know, I mean, the kid is being real, like growing up in Hollywood, just like that movie Quiet on the Set, these kids grow up pretty fast and they're kind of thrown to the wolves and not protected. You know, a lot of us look on the outside and think it's such a extravagant, fabulous lifestyle when in actuality it's really not. It's destroying these children. Um, some even accused him of being ungrateful and disrespectful to his father who gave him a privileged life and opportunities. So see, a lot of people think that, again, just the fact that you have money, they believe that that's a privilege. When on the flip side, as, as we see what happened with Cassie and Diddy, her being around him, all the stuff that she's alleging he did, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want a damn million nothing for that. The man allegedly did stuff. On, I'm not even going to go into all the stuff that he did, but like, People will just trade their souls and their dignity for money. The mental aspect of it, when you let somebody dehumanize you, is no money in the world that's going to make that right, period. Because you could be broke. It's some, it's some people that ain't got a lot of money, but they got a healthy, 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 healthy dose of self-esteem, you know, and, and their mind is right. Can you imagine the stuff that how you have to clear your head to deal with some of the things that have happened to some of these people. So money is not always worth it. And it ends saying, what do you think of Quincy's interview? Do you believe him? Do you think he was traumatized by Diddy's wild parties? Do you think um, he should have kept his personal issues private? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. So I don't see y'all saying nothing in the comments. Uh, okay. Rebecca says, poor Quincy. Yes. I mean, people just assume that because you have money and wealth that, you know, your life is so easy, but you don't listen. Those kids could have been passed around from what we're learning. I mean, hell, who knows what happened? It, like my uh, thumbnail says, a house of horrors. That's what I'm getting. Uh, Lulu says, I don't put anything past Puff. Those who know, know exactly. That's kind of what, okay. So for me, as I'm going down this rabbit hole, as I'm going down this rabbit hole and just reading like Lipstick Alley and Sandra Rose and all these different sites, if you go back in time, you're going to start seeing stuff that 
people are just starting to talk about. So that's what we're going to. So that's what I wanted to get into. So let me let me cough, y'all. You know, when I when I talk, you guys have to cough a little bit. So let me mute and cough. OK, so let's see. Uh, now, this is the one. This is where I. I was looking for stuff. I was like, OK, let's see. Do we see any? Have we heard anything about Diddy? doing anything inappropriate to the kids, you know. Um, and then I stumbled upon this because I had never heard it before. But y'all, we're going to talk about this. Now, this to me is not cool. Okay. So if you go to Lipstick Alley, see, you got to, a lot of us as content creators, content creators, we are jumping on the trending topics, right? But I have a tendency, like, I just get obsessed and I'll be just reading and finding and looking and, you know, trying to find pieces that, you know, we've just kind of skimmed over. But look, I knew it was something, something about Diddy <clears throat> and his obsession, in my opinion, with Quincy. I've always felt like, I mean, that's not your son, granted, and you were with Kim since he was a kid, but he was just always fawning over Quincy a little bit too much to me. <clears throat> always just giving him props because he has his own child by Kim Porter, uh, King Combs, and then allegedly Justin, but you know, his paternity is even being questioned because he don't look like Diddy in my opinion. The one, only one that looks like Diddy is uh, King to me. But I always thought that, you know, just the way he would be the hype man for Quincy was a bit much. And then, y'all, I stumbled upon this. Albie Sure's son, Quincy, speaks on his stepdad kissing him on the lips and says Al was never there. Hmm. Huh. Okay. So when I, I'm like, oh, well, hell, I want to I, I wanna see this, right? I copied this, uh, this Earl right here to go look at the video. You guys, when you go to, because this was, this interview was done with Sway, right? Because um, you can still see the video. You can still see parts of that interview if you go to Sway's channel. It was done back in, I guess, 2012, 2011, some, sometime around then. The interview was up, but you won't see this particular, the um, the part where he's talking about Diddy kissing him on the lips I looked up the video because I saw it I saw it referenced in about three different places when you actually copy this Earl and go to the YouTube page the video has been removed so we know that when there's information about you know things that celebrities or people that that they don't want to they will try to scrub the internet they will have ways to you know attack the channel and have it taken down on every channel that I visited to find anything related to this comment, because I believe I believe this interview occurred. The video is missing. Anytime you're on the internet, um, they're just footprints and, uh, and and data that metadata and stuff. And so this is a total example where there was a video. We can go to the channel, but it says it's been removed. That is proof that it was there. This was the topic, but for some reason, this is something that Diddy or whoever or his team, they probably didn't want um, want it to be discussed. So Lulu says, rest in peace, Shak Shak Shakir Stewart. Eric, exact, yes, yes, ma'am, you're absolutely right. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, Shakir Stewart, he was a, a record exec and he was allegedly dating Kim Porter. Diddy, they had some kind of a, I believe Diddy had somebody jump on him and then um, mysteriously he they're claiming he unalived himself. Now, his family is saying he went into a depression and all of these different things. But if we look at what I'll be sure is saying and people connected to Diddy, we don't know if he was drugged. Maybe he did unalive himself. But was he pushed to do it? Um, his wife allegedly was in the house when it happened. I mean. Who knows what really happened? Who knows? But all of these people, what they're saying now is a lot of these old stories are being revisited and people are going to, you know, hopefully 
they're going to look into some of the things that could have occurred. Um, hey, Miss Lecky. Hey. And she said, hey, to the chat, too. Um, and Lulu says, hey, Miss Lecky, back. Um, yeah, so it looks like, in my opinion, I feel like mm, if you read these threads, so if you read these threads, right, they're actually saying that if you Diddy, if he was an abuser and as abusive as people are saying, then um, why wouldn't he be? I'm trying to find some of the stuff uh, that an abuser is typically abusive to not just people on the outside, but to the to the women in his home as well as the kids. So people are talking about it. So this was um. Look, the whole thread was like in 2020, 2012, um, and people are saying, I wonder if Quincy gets along with his other brother. It seems like Al B spent more time with Al. So what? They don't talk. So they're talking about that. Then somebody says P. Diddy is Al B. Sure's son, stepdad, and kissed him on the lips. Exactly. That is so yikes. And apparently, again, I can't. I If anybody has the video, if you can find it, please let me know. Send it to me. Um, I would love to see it. This, because Diddy had so much control, he's raised his kids since he was a kid. He probably had brainwashed him to think that it's okay. I honestly don't, I, I don't see no stepdad kissing the stepson on the lips. I, I just don't think that's cool. And especially with what we're hearing about Diddy, that this man may be a bi you know, man, and now you kissing this young boy, like it's all inappropriate to me. And if it was my son, it would definitely would have never occurred. I, I would, that just seems odd. And the fact that he's publicly speaking about it, obviously, you know, Diddy has made him feel that it's okay. And he, you know, um, when I was reading the different articles, he was defending it because he didn't see nothing wrong with it. There's no damn reason for no grown ass man, your stepdaddy, to be kissing no boy, teenage boy, none of that on the icking lips. Period. Period. Now, some people might think different, and oh, trigger warning if anybody has experienced this, please log off. I don't want you to be re traumatized, you know, because we are talking about sensitive subjects. So please, to be sensitive, you know, please, uh, this is you know, adult, an adult conversation and nobody under 18 should be listening to this as well. But we also remember when little Wayne um, was being kissed on the lips by baby. Um, people were like saying that was suspicious and odd and weird. Right. So, I mean, I just, it's all inappropriate, you know, and yeah, other people are this whole thread. People are like, what the hell? Um, Somebody says, now, see, this was something I just saw today. They said <laughs> off topic and see, uh, these are allegations and I'm just reading from this thread. Um, it says off, off topic, but wasn't Al B. Sure accused of blank back in the day. My friend asked me that the other day and I thought it sounded familiar. Like, I don't remember anything like that. I've never heard anything like that, but it's interesting. I will definitely look it up. Um And so then, you know, they're going on saying, I hope nobody comes in here saying he should forgive his father and do blah, blah, blah. People who have fathers that refuse them don't have to do ish. But then if he wants a relationship with Al, then that's his choice. He forgot a blessing in disguise with Diddy. Props to Diddy. Now, see, um, again, I don't know if Al B. Sure was necessarily a deadbeat dad or if Diddy orchestrated keeping him away from his son. I mean, as violent as they're saying this man is, you know, it, it may have been a it may have been a hard fight. I, I don't know, you know. Um, but this art, you know, this thread goes on with people are, you know, debating whether or not I'll be sure is wrong. He should have stepped in and done something. So Lulu says they allegedly um that and assaultish oh on tape. It's all over lipstick alley. I don't believe. Okay. Yeah, see, I heard it. Okay, so I've seen that he allegedly may have been. Oh, you know what? 
Okay, so I got to go back and do my research on that. I did hear that there was a tape or that there was rumored that he was in some compromising position, but I didn't know that um, he had been, uh, excuse me, assaulted. Okay, I'm going to go back and, and look that part up, but I don't believe he did either. I, I don't believe that he did either. And um, yeah, he he's actually from the Bay Area and I know somebody who knows his one of his his uncle or or somebody related to them his granddad who's still alive and the family um they don't believe that he did either his family is in richmond and apparently people who are close to the family they don't believe it yet because he's from here so maybe about a year or two ago because i used to do a little more stories on diddy back in the day somebody told me that you know his family never believed that story because he wasn't here when it happened. He was like out in New York, but his family, some of his family is still out here in the Bay area. Um, so Terrence says, hello. So yeah, so it, that's just weird to me. You know that um, this says Quincy says that Diddy kissing him on the mouth is all love. It's natural. They're close and he can't feel no type of way because it causes other people to feel some type of way. He says he is closer to his dad now, but Diddy is the one that was there for him. Listen, again, I'm going to reiterate. I don't care. Um, my mother and my daughter, even growing up as a little girl, my mom would kiss her on the top of her head. Like, you know, the side of her head. The lip kiss is just mm, for what? I don't know. Maybe I'm a little bit too old fashioned and, and it could be nothing wrong with it. But again, when you have a person like Diddy, no, you don't want them kissing your young boy, his stepson, on the lips. All that we're finding out about this, I mean, these are all allegations. So let me let me take a step back. But all that we're hearing about his uh, activities, hell no. You don't need to be kissing that. Uh, and the way it sounds, it's not, it, to me, because he was talking about it in an interview. So my assumption, because that would have been about 10 years ago. So he would have been in his 20s. To me, that sounds like you're still, this is a, a teenage to a grown man that you're kissing on the lips. For what? For what? I'm not normalizing that. See, people try to make a lot of stuff normal, just like they did quiet on the set with those people massaging um, that producer. No, it's inappropriate. You don't need to be kissing on no children like that. So anyway, that was on um, Lipstick Alley. Now, let's see. There was another one. Um, now, I want to talk about not only to me is it inappropriate that Diddy was, you know, kissing him on the lips. But I want to talk about how it appears that Diddy was very, very obsessed with Quincy. If y'all see old videos of Diddy from way back, like in the, I'm going to say the 2000s, early 2000s. I mean, this man was infatuated with that kid. I know it was his son, but he has two other sons, right? But he, to me, he pumped this one up the most. At first, I used to say, oh, he's just color struck. He's a colorist. But now, but now, I'm feeling like there's more to it. Okay. So let's look at Diddy. Um, let's see. where Diddy calls him beautiful, okay? It's just, y'all, you could tell me if I'm wrong, but it just seems very, very weird. Okay. Just looking at my beautiful son. Boy, you's a, you's a beautiful <laughs> black king. Thank Jesus, you, you just look at that. Woo! <laughs> man, Thank you. man, man. Man, I bless, love you. Thank you. I mean, what you doing, man? You're getting what, what's going on, man? Growing up, Pop. You're growing, growing up. up growing you're growing up. up. Growing growing up. up. What's up? What's up? What you doing right now in life? Tell, tell the people what you're doing. Yes. I'm filming a TV series, Star, yes. which comes to your TV screen soon, December 14 for a preview. Then in January, we're going to, you know, give y'all the full series. But be excited. So, yeah. Yeah. Doing. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna be going crazy. We're right. gonna, we gonna need more security, y'all. Need more security, believe that. <laughs> I gotta get him again. I gotta get him at night. I just, 
I'm just so proud of you, boy. Come on, let me get you in the light. Hold on. I got, I gotta get you in the light. Look, at, man, you don't go. You was just my baby. Look at you, man. Look at him. Gears right from head to toe. His swag. That's that Quincy Drink swag. Yeah, the alcohol hydrate. Look at you. Hey, man, it's something when your kids can grow up and be their own man. Look at you, man. I ain't got nothing to do with this fly, but you fly than a motherfucker, B. Yeah. Ah. We are on set, and as you can see, we got greens, beans, potatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes, ham, <laughs> So, y'all, I, it's one thing for parents to, to, um, you know, boost their kids up and be like, oh, baby, you know, you you looking beautiful. You, girl, you're so pretty. And to, I don't know how dads tell, tell their sons, but that right there, it's see, we have to still, we have to go back to the fact of what Diddy is being accused of underage boys and girls. I mean, and we know that some of these people have a history of that. R. Kelly was accused of being with girls and boys you know and now you know now that we know the history the allegations uh against diddy with usher it just is creepy to me i mean lulu said it is creepy girl very creepy so creepy beyond creepy um thank miss lackey that that's what i'm saying isn't that overboard like you he's because you can tell in one of those videos, it sounds like he's a little, you know, on that slur cane, like he a little bit tipsy. And you know, when you tipsy, that's when the truth comes out. It's almost like in a flirtatious way. It's not even in a parental way. It's almost in a, I want to, okay, we don't know. We have no idea what was really going on behind the doors there now when i was reading about um some of these you know people reading the comments people were making great points because initially when kim porter was unalived uh, allegedly uh quincy posted on his ig he said something or he had some kind of a bad boy uh necklace on or some you know something some chain and so people were saying that at this point, he's scared or he cannot come out against Diddy because his sisters, he has to stay in Diddy's good graces to protect his two twin sisters. And also they're saying that Diddy has funded his lifestyle. I mean, so those, those, all of those things make sense to me. So I was like, okay, that's a possibility. So if Diddy has done things in the past and even, you know, maybe have been inappropriate with him, maybe he, really can't say anything and so then i also read uh i was reading that there were allegations that he was you know gay which i i don't necessarily believe that you know i don't know people are saying that um they've never really seen him in a long relationship with a woman he did date kiki palmer allegedly but that relationship fizzled out you know so there were people going back and forth talking about whether or not he dated now as a young man at his age as good looking as he is, I would be highly suspicious to think that he ain't dating somebody at some point, okay? And when he um, does the interview with Sway, Sway is asking him and the other guy in the interview um, if they've, you know, had relations. Because like I said, at that time, he was a little younger. He was probably early 20s, maybe right, just turning 20. And, you know, he was saying that, yes, he has been in, you know, had some relations and all that stuff. So... But we don't know, you know, and I, I don't think it's fair to just make an assumption because you haven't seen him with a woman that he's gay. But given his lifestyle and the people he's around and all the women that want him and men, I would find it hard to believe that he ain't dated somebody or he ain't done something. So that's interesting. And and the thing with Kiki Palmer, does anybody, can anybody put it in the chat? Have you, um, do you know anything about the relationship with Kiki Palmer? Did did something happen? Did they, do you know why they broke up? Cause I didn't find anything um, concrete to talk about, you know, if the relationship was bad or anything like that. But again, it's just so, so weird, you know, like what is really going on? This man, if you look at those videos, he's just going on and on about, Ooh, yeah. Look at that fine mother. That's the top. That's pimp talk to a, to a chick, right? 
you know, and I, and I don't necessarily just mean pimp talk, but you know that when a, that's when a man is admiring a woman where he just like, oh, it, you know, <laughs> you know, like you looking, oh, you guys know, you know, I'm not trying to be like how the men do it, but you guys know what I'm saying. It's like he was looking at him in a way like, you know, you know, you know. OK, so then this is another one I want to show you guys. Y'all tell me, jump in the comments. Maybe I'm being a little bit overboard, you know, but I feel like it's very, very inappropriate. Okay, let me get this one. Um, okay, y'all, let me see. Let me see. I got that one. Okay, yeah, this one. Now, you guys know, which this is another weird thing. You know, Diddy allegedly has a dot. Now, okay, he adopted, allegedly adopted Quincy. And now, and then he adopted this white girl, Ava. Now, I don't know where Ava is. I don't know what's going on with her. I haven't really looked that deep into her situation. But even that video that he did with them, that was creepy. Everybody was always applauding Diddy for being such a great father. But if you if you go back to what we just recently read about what Quincy was saying, that don't sound like he's been so great. It sounds like there's been a lot of trauma and chaos that he's put in these kids' lives. But anyway, let's... let's uh, I'm a Capricorn, and I'm about that action, and I'm about raising money for the healthcare people. Oh, and we're just so blessed and thankful, and thank y'all for supporting us today. Yeah. Bad boy. Perfect. What up, y'all? I'm Quincy. I want to say thank y'all for rocking with us. What you about? One of the prettiest Sorry. I'm a Gemini. <laughs> for everybody wondering, and thank y'all so much for just. Let's run that back again. Look at this. Look at this. He didn't listen. Money for the healthcare people, oh, and we're just so blessed and thankful. And thank y'all for supporting us today. Yeah. Bad boy. Okay. What up, y'all? I'm Quincy. I want to say thank y'all for rocking with us. One of the prettiest motherfuckers God ever made. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Huh? What? Now y'all notice. So he, uh, King comes on as well. He didn't do that for Justin. Now, did he? He didn't do that for Justin. Justin was on there. He he had all the kids introduce themselves. And actually, we can watch that as well. The only one that he talked about being a fine mother, mm, one of the prettiest. On, first of all, you calling this boy pretty, beautiful. You're 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 sexualizing him and using words that often are used to describe a female. Let's just call it. We usually say men are fine, which he does say he's fine. He called him boy fine too, but it's just all so inappropriate to me. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and play that video so we can just look at the whole thing because I had stopped it, but yeah, let's just look at the whole thing. And I know many of you guys probably have seen it already. As we finish y'all, um, you go, Justin. My name is Justin. AKA Just Glow. I'm a Capricorn and I'm about that action and I'm about raising money for the healthcare people. Oh, and we're just so blessed and thankful. Yeah. And thank y'all for supporting us today. Yeah. Bad boy. Perfect. What up, y'all? I'm Quincy. I want to say thank y'all for rocking with us. What you about? One of the prettiest God ever made. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a Gemini. <laughs> for everybody wondering. And thank y'all so much for just, you know, tuning in with us. We felt the energy, we saw the comments. Let's keep it going. You know, this is, uh, you know, we wanted to do this to just wake everybody up in a way of just, you know, in a loving way, you know, so help everybody have a happy Easter. Jesus bad is boy, risen. Bad boy. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah. Everyone int introduce yourself. My name's Ava. I'm a Scorpio. No, no, no. What's your last name? Oh, Ava Combs. What's your other last name? Ava Baroni. Ava Baroni Combs. Yes, it's, it's breaking news. Diddy adopted a white child. I want, you, I want you to tell them the story about how I adopted you. We, but you still have beautiful parents that, but you're my child also. Please, please tell the story. So, I was <laughs> on the streets, and then Papa Combs decided that he would like to be a caring man. So then he saw me and decided to pick me up and said to come inside and play with his kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm not a suspect. <laughs> I, I don't want nobody. You know, we want to get it clear. I, I adopted you like Madonna adopted kids and everybody else adopted kids. Charlie Theron, everybody's ever. Now, that was weird to me. Just the fact that he had her saying she was on the streets and all like, what? That's embarrassing. Like, why did she even need to do that? You know? And clearly, he's looked like he done well, had a little Sandra something. Bullock, I adopted you because I felt that you could, you know, um, enjoy also having a black parent to take care of you and help you out. It's enough so, black kids um, that need to be um, adopted. Just clarify it because it's, it's crazy out here online. So, so like, <laughs> I, I play with the kids and I got permission from your mother. And to say all of that. It's, just making, it's crazy out here. Yeah, it's crazy because this is uh, weird. I Jesse and Lila when I was six months old. Six months. <laughs> and six then months. we basically are sisters. All four sisters. of us. So. Six and months then is cool. I always come over. Yes. And, and it's Ava, Brioni Combs. Come on. Let's go. Hi, I'm Jesse, and I'm a Sagittarius, the best sign in the world. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Chance. I'm a Cancer, and I just want to say thank you guys for watching. It's Christian Combs, aka King Combs. You know, right now I'm not a wavy geyser, but you know, after this quarantine, I'm gonna be back. But yeah, man, I love making music. Go check out my music. Get Tiana Taylor, how you want it? Surf City Girls, Chris Brown, love you better. And I'm an Aries too. Shout out to my Aries out there. Bad boy. Love. Shout out to the Capricorns though. Did you yeah. 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 Go, baby. Okay, so I'm Delilah, and you know, you always have to save the best for last. <laughs> so, I'm with Sagittarius, and yeah, I like to like dance and model, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> we have the newest addition to the Combs Empire. Tell me your name, Prince. Prince. What's your sign? What's your zodiac sign? Scorpio. <laughs> I'm a Scorpio. He's a Scorpio. Ava's Scorpio. Shout out to all the Scorpios. And tell them what you're going to be when you grow up. 16. You're going to be 16? <laughs> you're going to be a king? Mm. You're gonna take a <laughs> Say thank you to everybody. Thank, thank you. you guys. Thank you to the healthcare workers, the first responders, everybody, everybody on the front lines. Thank you. And um, did everybody go? Yeah, thank you to all the healthcare workers. We love y'all. We so love y'all. Who are you? Who are you? Oh, oh, oh. Y'all want me to introduce me? Hey, yo. Hey, yo. My name is Love, and I'm a Scorpio. I like listening to Luther Vandross, sipping on Petrus, owning Ciroc, and being a, a revolutionary inventor, a black king god, you know? And, um, you know, that that's I like to dance in my spare time. You know, I, I like to... um. Make hits. Okay, okay. And 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 I'm just an all around fun type of guy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so you see it. I'm from Harlem. I'm from Harlem and Mount Vernon. And you know it. I'm from New York though, the greatest city in the world. And we wanna thank y'all. So yeah. Jean says creepy. Exactly. I mean, first of all, adopting that little girl talking about she needed a, a white parent if you're gonna adopt her why are you even saying all that stuff i felt like she didn't even look comfortable you're putting her on the spot and that's that's i mean you know as a foster parent or an adoptive parent if you truly want this kid to feel included you don't just single them out like that oh i adopted you it's like constantly throwing it in their face i've seen stories about uh foster kids again if this is a sensitive subject please you know go please this is the time to not to leave right at but i've heard uh foster kids and adopted kids saying you know they don't like to be constantly re reminded like you're, you're putting them up there like a trophy like look what i did i did something so look at me 
I took this kid in. Like, don't do that. And then you bring in the race factor. Oh, she needed a, a black parent. No, she needed a stable, healthy environment, regardless of the color, right? So that was weird, the whole way he presented it. Um, and Lulu, I said the same thing. I know he has that little girl, you know, the the baby, the the newest baby, but because I'm thinking that's the little son. I don't know where that <laughs> girl. I, does this man just collect random kids? I don't know. Um, so then as I was looking at him, I kept saying, well, and I didn't do the research to find out, so I ain't going to lie. I, I didn't. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if he's had an extra little random somewhere up in there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know whose baby that is. Um, I don't know if it's one of his adopted, uh, you know, quote unquote adopted kids. I don't know. Lulu says, I'm concerned. Thank you. But you know what? The good thing about this. Now, if you go online, there's, st there are people saying, um, and I, I, I haven't confirmed any of this. See, I don't just like to just jump on and chase, you know, trending topics just for the sake of getting clicks and views but there are um headlines out there that ava is missing or where is she you know and i don't know how long ago this video was made but yeah you know, I, I don't know like where is this girl because you can definitely believe that it, she will be a topic or a witness in this whole case like all of this stuff that Diddy has put online, he's forgetting it's going to resurface. And a lot of it, you know what they say, anything you say can and will be used against you. What were you doing with all of these kids? You know, you're they're claiming that you're trafficking. So what were you doing, Mr. Combs? So he can't start grooming. So he can start. Exactly. That's, that's, that's what I'm feeling like, you know. Um, and the industry... It's so many young people who just want to make it. They will do anything. And this little girl here, like she said, he found her on the streets. Come on now. You know, so basically it's like he's pumping her mind up or she's been brainwashed to be like, oh, I got you off the streets. Your parents signed you over. A lot of this stuff that we're seeing about him, this is a classic Lifetime movie, y'all. Y'all know, well, this is going to be a damn good movie because, you know, it's got to be a movie. but. What about all those Lifetime movies we've seen with stuff like this? It's like right in our face and nobody has done anything. I don't even remember when this aired, you know, or when he posted this about this girl. I've never, I, I never even knew that he had a, a quote unquote adopted white daughter. Very, very weird. You know, it's just so many things about him that are starting to come out. And his affiliation with these children and all of these boys is just alarming. This was okay. You know what? She, you're right. You're absolutely right. It was during the quarantine. Thank you. Thank you, co host. I appreciate you. Yes, that I did remember when they were talking about it, they made some comments about that. But again, where, where are the parents? Like, why is this girl over there? Is he, I feel like as a parent and those of you who have children, you know, you can't just let your children go any and everywhere. You know, you got to worry about strangers, stranger danger. You got to worry about relatives. I don't really believe there. I don't for me, um, there is no safe space. I don't believe I never just assume that, oh, that person would never do it. Because you just never know. You don't know until it happens. So just as a safety net, just keep your children safe. So I don't know what parents, just like Usher, Usher's mom is catching a lot of flack for turning over her young son to Diddy, given the industry. Even before we knew all of, all of the things that we knew about Diddy, what parent allows your teenage child to go be living with somebody else? Even if even if the person is allegedly trying to um, help them get into the music industry. I mean, you would be more concerned about your kids well-being because now what it's looking like, just like with some of the uh, families in the R. Kelly situation, is you put the money, you prioritize the dollar over your child's safety. And anybody who knows anything, I don't care before R. Kelly was outed and Diddy and all of this. 
we've all heard rumors about the uh, casting couch and the rumors about Hollywood and stuff that's going on. I mean, it, you know, even if it was never really proven, we've all heard the stories. I don't know most parents that would just allow their kid to randomly go live with another adult for what? And, you know, I know it happens. Um, it's also something that happens with those those young um, Olympians, you know, where the kids, the parents will let them go live with a family so that they can learn, you know, to be champion ice skaters and stuff. But for me, my kid don't never have to be super famous, super rich, super nothing because their safety is more important to me. The fear of somebody doing harm to them would outweigh any advantage of a dollar or stardom to me. It just, no, 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 no. Yes, girl. Lulu says these momagers be selling their children to the higher bidder. That's exactly, I mean, that's exactly what they're seeing a lot happen with um, the R. Kelly. You know, parents, when he was telling them, I'm going to make your daughter this and that. And all they're seeing is money and fame and fortune. You know, you're not thinking about, well, mm, interesting. Even, I mean, we can even go back to Jay-Z. And y'all know I keep going back to Jay-Z because I've been doing a lot of research on him. But all of these grown-ass men with these young girls or grown-ass men with these young boys, where are the parents? Um, my daughter used to do, uh, sh when she was little, maybe three or four, she used to do modeling for like Pottery Barn. But my mom was always like, we're in the Bay Area. When you go to these uh, photo shoots and stuff and, and the kids are on the set, only like she did, she just did like, you know, the little kids posing for the Pottery Barn, the little, you know, clothes and stuff, whatever. The parents are right there. The kids are never with out of your, you know, guardian sight. So I don't understand <laughs> how this was allowed to happen because you're really supposed to have a female around. There's always supposed to be like a guardian or somebody to make sure that the kids are safe. So I don't know. Even, a, oh my God, Aaliyah, oh Lord, girl, you are bringing up something that's definitely, that's a whole subject in and of itself. Because I did a lot of stuff um, in the R. Kelly when, when that case was going on. And I even interviewed the guy that was his um, manager back in the day. And there are allegations. Okay, you know, these are allegations. Not my words, but it's all out there. That her mom, you know, that and that she may have messed with R. Kelly too. You know, I mean, R. Kelly... Apparently, it looks like he himself was a victim, but then he became the victimizer, allegedly. So um, with Aaliyah, yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it sounds like her mom and her family that they kind of just turned her over. Not saying that they, you know, did like Usher's mom and let her go live with him. But yeah, you know, that they just kind of, I mean, I feel like maybe it's like, turn a blind eye if I don't see something and you know it's not in my face then meh. you know um it's like he says exactly I'm still looking at Aaliyah's mom sideways well girl you know y'all know oh man I wish I I think I um deleted a lot of those videos but you know there were allegations that um you know that that the mama was messing with him now the one one rumor that I thought was just totally outlandish was the fact that they said um, that they had a threesome now. Now I was, like, I'm like, now y'all just y'all go too damn far now. It ain't no way. I mean, I, I have there are some TikTok stories where this mother and a daughter recently was saying that they you know sleep they sleep together with the, um, some men, but Aaliyah and her mom and Kales. I now I was like, now I draw the line there. Now is it possible that R. Kelly had relationships with the mom? I could. That's that's believable. But um, I don't know about that one. <laughs> uh, Miss Lackey says, at Lulu, we are on the same page. Uh, Miss Lackey says, I heard that too. Right. I, I, which one did you hear? Did the mom slept with him or did you hear also that they, it was three of them? The three of them, I'm like, come on now, y'all. Just be, <laughs> y'all be lying. I ain't gonna lie behind you on that one because that one seems far-fetched. At Miss, we definitely are, sis. Um, Ms. Lackey says, I named my daughter 
after her because AJ nothing but a number was playing when I was in labor. Girl, but see now that we look back, the whole A and yes, and Ali is a beautiful name. I love that name. Um, but now <laughs> when we look back, he was grooming then, like, you know, age ain't nothing but a number. She was singing it, but that's what he was telling her. Like, you can imagine what he did to get her to be with him, you know? Um, yeah, th th and those are definitely R. Kelly's words. And he was telling the young girl, age ain't nothing but a number. Age is more than a number, sweet peach. It's a whole lot. No grown ass men don't need to be with no baby. I mean, you're grown. Why, like, get a grown full woman. You can get an 18. I mean, that's still young, but Aaliyah allegedly, I mean, you know, the, the time in which he started possibly messing with her it was maybe 14 to 15, they're seeing as young as 14 to 15, which is sick, sad, and disgusting. And I feel like she wasn't protected, period. You know, and, and people, um, you know, I, there are some people who have, um, I've read things where people are saying Aaliyah wasn't so innocent herself. In my opinion, any time a child has been abused like that, you know, uh, and they weren't saying that she had done anything with other um, kids, but saying like she was uh, sleeping around with different men in the industry. These young girls are passed around. I don't feel like it's their fault when you have parents turning you over to this industry and not protecting you. You can't blame them for just thinking that that's what they're supposed to do. You know, so I really don't like when I hear people talking about, oh, you know, she was part of the problem. She was she was with Jay-Z and Dame Dash and this person and Missy Elliott. Like, let it go. This this girl came into this industry at 12 or 13 and she was not protected. So anything that happened beyond that, those were vultures. They preyed on her, not her fault. Um, Lulu says her family owns a lot. Yes, yes. I heard that that was part of the settlement, right? So to keep him from going to jail at that time. Yeah, you know. Um, bring the mess TV. Hey, bring the mess TV. Welcome to the family. Oh, y'all. So Grape Tea News had get, gave me the name um, Celebrity. Uh, what did he say? No, Scandalous Crew. And my daughter came up with Scandalous Squad and um, Secret Society of Scandalite. So I'm like, oh, I like I like all of the above. So I got to pick one or two. Right. So anyway. Oh, so this is a good this is a good time for me to talk about it so i'm going to be giving a 50 dollars giveaway so y'all tell your friends log on join the lives i'm gonna be um just randomly probably uh friday i'm gonna be doing my 50 dollars giveaway and i'm also i also want you guys to uh jump in the comments and vote do you like celebrity scandalous crew scandalous squad and i'm gonna just keep the um Secret Society of Scandalites, because I just like that. We'll just be using that maybe if I get a Patreon. But yeah, y'all jump in the comments and, and just let me know what name you like. And so like whoever responds or leaves a, you know, a like or tell me what they like, I'm going to be picking from those people just to kind of share the wealth. You know, on Friday, we all could use a little extra Starbucks. You you know, $50, it ain't a lot, but it could buy you a little Starbucks or something. Okay, so Please jump in the comments and any any of the videos that I do from today till Friday, I'll be picking somebody. Um, so Miss Lulu gave me a heart. Thank you. And yes, the mom. Yeah, I don't know. It's just it's just so sad and so disheartening. There's just so much. Let me see. I got it. What is this man's name? I did. A, um, I did it when I first started my channel, y'all, because. I was, you know, green. I did a, I did a, um, he was my first interview and girl, people ripped me to shreds, but that video got about 50,000 views, but his, if you guys want to see it, I think it's still up on my channel. R. Kelly's uh, manager. I don't know. I forgot the man's name. Cause it was a few years ago. Um, not him. Uh, I got to, I got to go back and find his name anyway, but it should be up on my channel. But he talked a lot about some of the stuff. Some people said that they felt that he was not telling the truth. But a lot of stuff that he's, oh, here it is. 
Um, his name is, oh, he testified in the, in the case too. Let me see. Um, former R. Kelly, former tour manager, reluctantly testifies about Aaliyah. He was the one who actually got the, took them to get that fake Demetrius Smith. Yes. So you guys might be able to see it on my channel. If not, I'll try to go back and find it and post it. But yeah, Demetrius, we talked, um, we would talk a lot and he actually wrote a book um, and he talks about it. And he was the one that was telling me, I mean, and he had to testify to some of this during the trial. So I believe, and he was also in the surviving R. Kelly, that lifetime, um, you know, that lifetime documentary. And he's one of the people who was telling me stuff about her mom, you know, um, he didn't want to talk about some of it. And so I'm not going to say that he stated verbatim because I got to go back and check my notes. I don't want to say something that he said that's not 100 percent accurate. But a lot of the behind the scenes, he was telling me how they would go to um, their home, him and R. Kelly. And, you know, her and R. Kelly would be, in, you know, hey, it, it was just what it is. So. Yeah. Um, the mom sleeping with him. Yes. Yeah. Um, Demetrius, I'm trying to think. I got, like I said, I got to go back to my notes because there were questions that I asked him and he would not answer directly. But, you know, the way that he talked about it, you can uh, arrive at your own conclusions, which is something probably went on with them. Um. And the thing is, is that when R. Kelly first got into the music, Demetrius was with him then, you know, old women, like when R. Kelly was before he turned 18, he, apparently he could sing and he was attractive. He Adult women were sleeping with him. Uh, he actually uh, was messing with a ball player's wife. Uh, I forget the guy's name. Y'all forgive me. But grown women married to celebrities. So they kind of took advantage of him as well. It is really, it is. I love that. Everybody loves Aaliyah, you know. I mean, and she was such a sweet spirit and a beautiful girl. Um, and people are saying that if she was still around, that she would have given Beyonce a run for her money. So I, I don't know about that. I don't want to upset the beehive. And, you know, because I wasn't a Aaliyah fan. But, you know, it's just so tragic. I remember when that happened to, you know, uh, it was just so sad. It was just, it was just very, very sad. My daughter is, oh, okay. We had no idea. Oh, that's wow. 28 now. Okay. Yeah. My baby is 24. So you know what it's like to have a, a young adult daughter. And, and you know that all this stuff that we're hearing about Puffy, half of it, it just is not cool. No woman, no mother wants their daughter to be around no perv like that. And in those kind of situations, I don't care for no money in the world. It's not worth it. I sometimes wonder about um, when you guys think about it, do, I think about Whitney Houston because, you know, her mom, Sissy, how she got her into the music industry and kind of put her on to because of the people that she knew, Aretha Franklin, because her mom used to sing backup. And I wonder, like, uh do do they sometimes say, I wish I hadn't done this for my daughter, even though she got so famous and got all this, like, would you, how, would you change anything? You know, if you knew that what the outcome would be, I mean, of course, if you knew what the outcome was going to be, you probably would say no, but it's sort of like, is it worth it? You know, uh, it just, it's all weird to me. Uh, Lulu says, hey, bring the mess. Bring the mess says, hey, Lulu. And Miss Lackey says, I have my own channel. I'm so nosy. I'm over here. Put your channel name, any content creators, please. Thank you guys for supporting me. I will support you as well. Please put the channel name in the, um, I know people can't necessarily click the link because I think I've tried to do that before, um, but go ahead and put it in there and, and give a description. I know I tell people to do it all the time, but you know, my mind be all over the place. So I, I don't be focusing like I should. But put your channel information in the chat. Shout out your channel. Um, yeah, Miss Lackey, I'm the same way. I should be, my channel should be much further along, you know, but I do, I have a full-time job, so I do what I can. I'm trying to get more consistent. But I'll be, it's so much, man, these content creators be having some stuff. I swear, I'll be so caught up in uh, other channels. 
it's good stuff. You know, I'm I'm like I admire, you know, other people, you know. So um Lulu says, Did you hear R. Kelly jail call with Wack? Yes, he yeah, he was kind of saying, you know, um, it could happen to anybody and saying like people, you know, can get caught up so easily. I did hear that. But how the hell is he man, they have more privileges than me. You, I mean, hell, they be in the in in prison getting phone calls, doing podcasts. Like, what prisons are they in, right? Yeah, I did hear that though. Yeah, um, but you, so you guys, I'm going. I was planning to do another video tonight. My next video, I don't want to just keep staying on um Diddy, but but there's so much. But I want to talk about because you know I was really into that R. Kelly trial. Some of the same people, this is such a connected, crazy, small, cult-like crew. Some of those attorneys, those dirty attorneys, they're all affiliated. So this is interesting because those tapes that um, they found at Diddy's house, some of the people, those attorneys who are protecting them, they have been caught up in scandals and schemes themselves. The attorneys are probably connected to politicians, lobbyists. It's such a dirty, dirty game. Like, oh my God, so many people are connected. And that's how Diddy was able to get away with it probably for so long. Um, it's like he says, yes, bring the mess says only mods have that power. Okay. See, I don't even still have mods. I tried to, I had some mod, a mod or two before. So I got to learn how to do all this stuff. Uh, basically because they, are, yes, they have a lot of, um, it's just crazy. One of the people that I remember from the Diddy case, I mean, from the R. Kelly case was Mark Garagos. And I just, because I just remember names because I used to be in legal. I used to be a litigation secretary. Mark Garagos, I just found out that he had been a Diddy attorney. I'm like, oh my God. Then there's, I think it's Avenatti who was representing R. Kelly. Like he ended up uh, getting some charges against him. They're, they were all sued for fraud and scams. You know what I mean? And these are criminal attorneys and probably people who have been at those parties who party with them. It, it's crazy. It's a crazy little circle. Prisons are definitely not the same. Oh, no, I know. One of my girlfriends, uh, she was a deputy a sheriff in San Francisco. Um, and she was in the, you know, the women's jail. And she used to get so pissed because uh back in the day i don't know what they do now but they had cable the ladies that were incarcerated they <laughs> they had tea and they would get massages girl you know to de-stress you know and i understand the counseling because you're kind of like okay well we want to rehabilitate you so maybe you need some counseling but girl she used to be hot she was like i'm working my self up in here these women getting tea and massages <laughs> that's what she used to tell me it used to be so funny um, uh, Miss Lackey says my, ch Miss Lackey is my channel name. Okay. Y'all, please, if you're not already sub, go check out Miss Lackey. I'm gonna make a note to myself so I can go to the channel and subscribe. I have to make notes cause I be forgetting stuff. Miss Lackey. Okay. So I'll, as soon as I log off, cause I'm about to be off in a second. So I'll go check your channel out and I'll go subscribe. Um, bring the mess TV, um, bring the mess TV. I'm going to go check your channel out too. Cause I'm, I'm pretty sure that's your channel name. The feds took those tapes, so the higher ups tapes won't get out. That's what people have been saying. But the problem with that is, um, it's so many people that are probably gonna have hands in that. Um, if you remember, there was a video that I did a video yesterday, as well as other people that um, those some of those tapes are already well, not necessarily the tapes that are are being introduced as ev evidence, but some of those there are tapes already that are being sold for a million dollars um, as NFTs. So uh, a lot of the digital uh, digital videos and all of that is probably already floating out there. So there's no way they're going to be able to suppress all that information and data. You know, um, the, the security companies, they can definitely access those videos. And I did, I think I did, a, um, I did a, a, a video about that yesterday when I talked about the NFTs. Um, there are websites where many people have security cams in their houses that are not secure and your ring cams and all of those little, you know, your doorbell cameras. So many people have cameras all over. There's just so much metadata floating around that 
people are going to be able to find stuff, period. So I don't think they're going to be able to suppress it. Um, oh, thank you. Yes, Bring the Mess TV. I forget to tell people that, please, because I'm trying to get into the algorithm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And again, please go uh, check out Bring the Messes TV. I'm going to check you out. Like, oh, let me make a note. So that's two channels I need to um, uh, check out and subscribe to. Lulu says he was also Diddy's attorney when Jonathan. Oh, that, that's another one. Jonathan Odie sued him for giving him. Oh, giving him the herb. OK, Puff ended up settling with him. Ah, see, I didn't get all of that data because they were saying that Jonathan was missing. But I got to go back because I did see him. Jonathan was saying that Mark was trying to shut him up or keep him, you know, from talking. So, yeah, see, it's, and so Jonathan when this video first came up, I first saw it on Tisa Tales channel, although it's an old YouTube video, and that was from 2018. So that man was given information back then. Let's not even forget that the feds got all this data. The stuff that we see on YouTube, if you if we are seeing it, you know they got a treasure trove of information. If if it by the time it reaches us, you know they already got it. Um Lulu says, I subscribe. Miss Mackey says, thank you, hun, and I'll thank you at Lulu. Um, Miss Hearts, 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 watch the Fed interview. Watch the Fed. Okay, what Fed, um, Lulu, which Fed interview? Girl, I'm like you. I'm always watching everyone else. I'm doing Diddy content and Portia. Oh, Portia. You know what? I want to do some Portia stuff, too. Man, I feel like, okay, you guys, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, I'm going to just say this and then I'm going to go ahead and log off. I got to be up early in the morning. Um, Portia kind of, I like Portia. I don't watch uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta like I used to. Like I used to be into it the very, you know, first like 10 seasons and not so much as, as you know, now. But I feel like Portia to some degree is getting back. Uh, her just desserts after what happened with Fallon. Now, I know some people are like, oh, well, you know, Fallon was cheating on um, Simon. But here's the thing. That's fine. You know, whatever Fallon and Simon if cheat, whatever. But Portia allegedly was cool with this chick. She was up in her house. And I just think there's a girl code. Like, just don't do another woman like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, if y'all end up together after the fact, okay. But it's almost like she took them. And then didn't have no, didn't care, you know, wasn't sorry about it or trying to apologize. Like, you know, we just fell in love. I didn't mean to do it. It's like, oh, well, they wasn't, you know, he wasn't, ha you know, she was just so matter of fact about it. So you kind of reap what you sow, sis. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, kind of reap what you sow. Um, and Lulu says, re rematch the whole, rewatch the whole interview and see how, yes, more, yeah, oh, gr girl, you gonna make me scream and my neighbor's gonna be like, shut the hell up, yes, when he was talking about, he called it liquid, yeah, and now it's just coming out, they, you know, that they're saying, um, young Miami was pushing it in the bottles, girl, yes, he gave us all the tea, and so they were trying to say he was crazy. So now what we're finding out, yes, I know what you meant. You said rewatch. What we're finding out now is that that's one of their tactics and techniques. If you have information on them, they do the humiliation. They try to get some tape or dirt on you. And then they try to um, uh, make you not credible by saying you're crazy so nobody will believe you. Because remember when people were talking about that um, interview with Odie or Adi, however you say his name. People were saying, well, you know, he's kind of crazy. Can't believe everything he's done. Lost his mind. And also, uh, 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 Lulu, remember this whole thing with Diddy owing all this money for his properties? Remember them talking about that? Odie, they're saying that. Remember, he was doing schemes and scandals and buying properties. These people are all connected. Miami, oh, my God. It's just too much, child. Y'all, listen, I can't even keep my thoughts straight. It's just so much. Um, Bring the Mess TV says, I agree. Um, Lulu is laughing. She was a runner. Yes. Yes. Y'all, but wait, what about J-Lo? We got to go back to the J-Lo thing. With, there's, there are headlines now. Back in that 1999 incident, 
And I rem- I really remember that because I remember <laughs> I remember when it came on the news and stuff. And they said J Lo was like, "Oh, I'm leaving," and they said, "Oh, no, ma'am, no, you're not." So I just did a video about that. Um, I guess J Lo was like, "Oh, somebody got a pow pow." Oh, I'm out of here. It wasn't mine. But now you you she they're thinking that she actually back because back in the day they said she did anyway, but she got off. But now they're going to revisit it because remember the lady is saying that she saw who pow powed her in the face and it was Diddy that he was the trigger man. So now J Lo, if they reopen that, if you know, with this new investigation, J Lo will have to testify, I believe. And we know that you gave him that um pow pow pistol. And we know they're calling her the the pow pow mule. Cause you know they call him saying he had a drug mule. Now she's the uh, pow pow mule like Diddy got everybody being a mule for him everybody's being an ass carrying his drugs and everything um his chief of staff that one lady that they're calling his chief of staff I forget her name y'all I'm not good with names they're saying that she had people walking around whenever they were around him that they had to carry um have a fanny pack on with drugs in it. Now, my, I use my fanny pack to walk and keep my cell phone in the little lip chap. She makes sure his people have drugs in it. I'm like, what the hell? What This is just like, I mean, these people are crazy. This, you know. Uh, okay, let me go. I think I missed some, so I'm going to kind of go back up here. Okay. Lulu said exactly. Hold on, y'all. Y'all know I got a cough. <clears throat> um, Lulu says... Lulu says, I believe every word of his. Yes, they try to make him look crazy. But now we're realizing probably 90% of what he said is true. And even if you're crazy, don't mean you're a liar, right? You can be crazy and still telling the truth. Yes, um, Breen the Mess TV says the security guard said he told women to never drink liquor from Puffy's house. Wait, the security guard ooh, told women to never drink liquor from Puffy's house and never leave a cup. Ooh girl yeah because if it's liquid uh i don't know a good word for that you know that's crazy because like i would think me with my simple self child i would be like girl i'm good you know um because i'm not sniffing up nothing but you don't even know if you're drinking it right like you got your little red cup although i'm very careful you know which i don't party like i used to but you know you you know we all have grown listen all of us ladies, I know our parents have all told us, our mama say, don't leave your cup. If you get up and get on the dance floor, don't leave your drink. And if you do, then it's done. Because I still have to tell my daughter that too. Because believe it or not, there's are still young women leaving a cup and people slipping stuff. And the game has gotten even so better now that the bartenders are doing it in Miami. I told y'all one of my friends that happened to, you know, her daughter, um, they they doing it. The bartenders are doing it, you know. And if you got you know you got enough money, they they'll probably slip something. It's happening all the time. Uh, Cassie said he made her yes, and you know J Lo did. J Lo wanted to be down because at that time I think she had she was just kind of moving up. I remember she had been on um you know the weigh-in show. Remember the weigh-ins and stuff. And she was just moving up, and she was doing her choreography. So. Puffy was still big in New York, right? I mean, he had to shine. She wasn't as big as him. I mean, she's pretty big now, um, although everybody don't seem to like her no more. But Jay, Jenny from the block. Remember J- <laughs> Jamie Foxx said J-Lo don't got so uppity? He said J-Lo. He said, don't get too uh, beside yourself. I remember when you was just, hey, ho. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Um, so Lulu said, I'm not surprised. And... KK and Christina, Christina Quorum. Yes, that was his chief of staff. These people, baby. And now they're looking back at the, the his chef that is suing him. So they're going to go back and start talking to her because she, you know, she was in the house. She saw everything. He said, Puffy always had uh, resale, resale bottles. When you go out of the country, they are doing it all the time to women and couples. Now, the thing about that is, like he said, they were using those private jets to move, you know, stuff. Yeah. I mean, 
some people are saying he's going to get away with it. I don't think so. I know it's a lot of people involved, but just like they brought Epstein down, just like Weinstein was brought down, this is an African-American man. He ain't no bigger than none of them people. Um, and as you can see, people are talking about he got money. They just told us the man is damn near broke, that them, them homes is in the record company's names. And um, we now we know that he didn't own Surat. Like, they do that too all the time. Just even like Kylie, you know, that she was a billionaire. Then we find out, no, those numbers were fake. They don't have all that money, you know? They got more than me. But, you know, so now that the fact that he ain't necessarily a billionaire, they don't give a damn. They'll bring him down. They are supposed to speak to plane operator also. Oh, yes, girl. Remember just like in uh, Epstein, that, that fly log, because there's a lot of information. I mean, y'all know if you have passports and stuff, all of that in and out of the country, they're going to be looking at all that. What you were in and out, who was on the flight. Um, they have to, right? Everything is going to be under a microscope. And a lot of people are going to want their names redacted. And it's just going to be a lot of stuff coming out. You know, I mean, this is crazy. He, no, I don't think he's broke, but I believe that he's not as, you know, he's not the billionaire that um, <clears throat> that they're saying he was. I know probably about three years ago, he started selling off homes. And I mean, I, you know, I think he was trying to liquidate things. He may have been in lawsuits then. He's not broke, but I bet you by the time they get through running through his pockets the way they did R. Kelly, he's going to, it's going to be painful. Those attorneys, if he manages to escape going to prison, you know how much money he's going to have to pay. They're going to, I mean, his attorneys are thousands of dollars an hour. Um, my attorney, I had, when I went through my uh, custody, I was paying 250. I think the highest I paid was 350 and that was back in 2004 and I'm a working woman. So if I was paying that just on the custody, you know what he paying 20, almost 20 years later, um, they going to run up those, those pockets. He's 140 million in debt. Isn't too big for someone of his stature. But again, we don't really know what his like how much of this is liquid how much of this does he really own like because remember what we found out about a lot of the music industry even if you go back to Clive Davis a lot of the things that those people have is not necessarily in their names I know that he has stuff in his daughter's name they say that he has stuff in his son's name but you know with all these payouts and money and and the attorneys I really think they're going to drain him you know but we'll see We'll see. Okay, y'all, I'm going to end on this one. He dumb if he didn't move all those videos to someone else's house. Maybe Jay-Z picked them up. Now, here's the thing about Bring the Mess TV. You might be new over here. I, I'm, I have a master's in digital security and cybersecurity. And the one thing that we all know about videos and cell phones is nothing is ever released. Um, I have, well, there's a video where people, they're talking about this Diddy situation and most of that stuff is recoverable. They have forensic tools that they can use. So if he deletes things, they're going to be able to see that it was deleted. Number one, they're going to be able to use people saying on this date at this party at this time, there's just such, there's so many ways that they can see metadata so that, um, if he does delete some things, and he can delete some things, but usually what happens is that things are not necessarily deleted on your local drive or your cell phone. What happens is the data gets overwritten, hopefully, and with the um, with the advances in technology, things just aren't overwritten as quickly, you know, as they used to be. I mean, we have partitions, and I listen. I'm so far removed from that network stuff, network security and stuff, but. A lot of things are already in the cloud. Um, you know, just the fact that, you know, if you look at a lot of the applications you uh, use, it can retrieve, like restore lost data. You can, if you're using Excel or you're using Word, it, you say, oh my God, it's gone. No, what happens is that temp file. So, so much of that, uh, I, I'm, I don't think he's safe. Also, you got to remember that security cams throughout his home those are supported on another platform. That's not all data. That's It might be stored on his local computer as well, but it's also 
feeding somewhere else to the to the company that's monitoring. I have an alarm system, right? So the, you're using their systems to capture your data. So I mean, I you know, this is not a cyber class, but yeah, Lulu, absolutely, they can retrieve it. And here's the thing: maybe not all of it, but enough of it. And usually, here's another thing: I got like three laptops, right? My cell phone, multiple cell phones. A lot of the things that you that you forget where stuff is. Like I was looking for an old video that I did. I was just looking for like a little a thumbnail that I did about Diddy, Lori Harvey, and all them. And I'm looking on my cell phone and my laptop that I'm using now. And it's like, oh, it's not, I don't know what drive is on. Sometimes all these different file systems and the way things are partitioned, you will forget where you save something. So uh, he, good luck with him trying to delete all that because I don't think you can. And then we're talking about years and years. And the other thing, just like R. Kelly, one of the things that got him in trouble was that he was he would travel with those tapes, those videotapes. Of course, those were like VHS tapes. Those kind of people, that's kind of, now I don't know nothing about psychology, so I'm not even going to venture to act like I do. Um, but that's kind of part of their sickness or that's their trophy, so to speak. They like to keep evidence that, oh, look what I got away with. Look what I did and rewatch it, right? So more than likely, and the, and the other thing is that Oftentimes, they just think they're smarter than everybody. They got that God complex. They think they're so damn smart, they're going to get away with everything. So, and then, look, remember, we even know he's an idiot because 50 Cent, you remember 50 Cent maybe three months ago when they talked about the fact that um, he had seen a video of Cassie and he called Diddy and said, hey, is this your girl? So, and they said that they believe that Diddy was the one who released those videos of her. So he has shared things with other people too, probably. So it has traversed across various networks and all of that stuff. So yeah. Um, Lulu says he been recording, he been recording since VHS. Exactly. That's the thing. It's gone. You forget stuff. Like I I didn't like, you know, even though I'm in in cyber, right? I have cell phones that I like, um, I like Androids. And you know how we take pictures and stuff and they tell you before, I, you know, you when you turn your cell phones in. Um, I'm going to say some years ago, I turned some of those phones in. You could take them to the local game store, right, and sell them back or whatever. And I did that. And I thought, you know, I was, you know, because all technology changes. You have to use different tools. And I did a hard factory reset. But then I learned later that it's still retrievable. There are still ways that they can get that metadata and put together. And I'm like, oh Lord, some of my, I, I didn't have nothing bad on there, but you, you know, your stuff is, you get insecure because you just never know. You know, you have to really know how to uh, sanitize those things in order to be sure. So um, if he had the police and others in his pocket and Cassie said he had those laptops set up streaming, what if he didn't use his Wi-Fi or his computers? Maybe the higher ups helped him. Yeah. I mean, I just think like if he's been doing this over 20 years, there's some remnants and footprints of data that you just forget about. Uh, it's hard to chronicle and store all of that information. Um, so, I mean, I, yeah, it, what if he didn't use his Wi-Fi or his or his computers? Um, maybe he used a cell phone. Um, maybe he used Polaroids. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know. But even. The thing about your laptops and your network devices is they all have a MAC address. So it's just like, you know, your IP address is like the phone number for your computer to the Internet. Well, your your hardware also has like a, a different um, um, address or not even like the serial number, but a MAC address so that it's identified when it's um, on the Internet and like your printers and stuff. So. They're even able to to the level of where you printed something from if they really want to do the forensic details of something they can, you know. So uh, Lulu, she says, Lulu, LOL. Okay, you guys, I'm out. I wonder if he made them tapes digital. He, girl, he probably did everything because he was sending them and sharing them with people. So, you know, uh, the ones that I think uh, 50 Cent was talking about, it sounds like it was done 
via cell phone and stuff. So, I mean, that's that's digitally, digitally transferred. Good night, beautiful people. Great life. Thank you, Lulu. I hope to see you guys again and you guys will see me on your channel. Um, I'm going to end the stream, but anybody who sees this, go ahead. Even if it's a replay, put your channel name um, in the comments. And please don't you guys forget, I want to um, please vote because I'm doing my $50 cash giveaway. Well, it'll be a, a cash app giveaway on Friday to uh, select my name. Is either going to be um, Scandalous Crew or Scandalous Squad. And then we're, I've already said, I like calling myself and, you know, those affiliated with us, the uh, Secret Society of Socialites. Okay. So y'all have a beautiful night. Y'all have a great uh, work week if you're working. If you're not working, honey, I envy you. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. And I hope you enjoyed your Easter. Bye, you guys. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Bring the, bring the Mess TV. Yes, please hit the like button. I'll see you guys the next time. Bye.